When you think about DNA, maybe you imagine a double helix looking like a spiral staircase. Or maybe you just see the sequence in your genes, like a page of letters. Real DNA looks nothing like that. It's a huge molecule crammed into a tiny compartment in our cells, but it's packed away with incredible care because our very survival depends on it staying folded in just the right three-dimensional shape. The human genome is about six feet long, which is about this wide. Uh, but this is not how the human genome works. In living cells, it's actually folded up in 3D to really fit inside this really tiny cell. And inside this structure, genes are touching different regulatory switches uh, to, to tell the cell which genes need to be expressed and which ones need to be silenced. If you look at a human body, it has about five trillion cells. If you take all the DNA in my cells and you would just line it up, stretch it out, it would be about the distance of a hundred times that between the Earth and the Sun. The Earth and the Sun? The Earth and the Sun. But the question really is, how does the cell take that very long molecule and fit it inside the cell in such a way that it's not all completely tangled up? This is how we grow cells. These are human cells. They grow on the surface of this flask. To get a glimpse of what DNA really looks like, I visited Job Decker, a professor at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. Decker and his colleagues are figuring out the ways in which our cells manage this amazing act of origami. It's not like it's got little fingers to, to just fold, fold it up here and there. Like, what's going on? Maybe it does. Maybe it has very specific machines, little protein complexes, that can grab the DNA and fold it. We don't know the identity of such machines, but our work and that of many others, they really lead to the prediction that there must be such machines. Until recently, scientists didn't know how to get a close look at the way in which DNA is folded in a cell. But a few years ago, Decker got an idea about how to get a glimpse at it in 3D. So what we are able to do now is to identify the structure of this whole chromosome by sequencing the places where pairs of these sequences touch. I make a long list of such interactions, I can imagine the three-dimensional path of the whole chromosome. So you don't know exactly what's happening in the rest of the chromosome, but you can kind of kind of limit the possibilities? We can now detect all these crosslinks. And we have a long list of them. This sequence is next to this sequence. This sequence is next to that sequence. How do you go from that list to a model of what actually the three-dimensional path of the DNA is? As scientists figure out the 3D structure of DNA, they're discovering that folding does more than pack a lot of DNA in a tiny space. Our cells fold their DNA in certain special arrangements so that they can make their genes work together in different ways. If you have a gene, it is often controlled, like turned on or off, by another piece of DNA that can be located very, very far apart from this gene. The chromosome is folded in such a way that that switch, which turns the gene on or off, is actually touching the gene. So all the DNA in between is looped. Everywhere in our bodies, folding DNA in three dimensions is crucial for letting it work properly. But sometimes DNA can get misfolded, and then bad things can happen. Decker is just starting to find the links between badly folded DNA and cancer and a variety of other diseases. Do you think it might someday be possible to treat a folding disease by by going in and actually trying to undo the misfolding and fold things properly? Could we fix the folding someday? Isn't that a fascinating idea? Um, I think we wouldn't be able to do that. Once we know how the cell does it, we can try to do that ourselves as well.